if there can be found among you within any of thy gates which the Lord, which thy God giveth, man or woman, that have wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord, thy God, in transgressing his covenant, and had gone and served other gods, and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the hosts, which I have not commanded. Deuteronomy 17.2 Greetings mortals and a capital day to you all. I'm your humble host Simon and you are watching the Library of Gnosis. This opening Bible verse is in my opinion most likely a commandment from Yahweh who I would like to suggest is actually Enlil or not actually the father of Jesus. So if Yahweh is in fact not the father then who is? Or rather should I say what is? I have previously made a video connecting Jesus to our son but my thinking has evolved since then. In a previous video I did on the platonic solids I brought fact that Johannes Kepler's ideas of the universe was that the universe itself was an image of God and with the sun corresponding with the father, the stellar spheres with the sun and the intervening space between to the holy spirit. Now I would propose the same thing as Kepler did, that the sun is in fact not Jesus but his father. Now this would not mean that the father is literally the sun but the symbolic connection he has with the heavenly bodies. The sun represents light, life, energy, power and warmth, all aspects that can be ascribed to God the father. If the sun is the father it would then make sense with my proposition that Jesus is in fact Mercury, which is the closest planet to the sun, as Metatron and presumably Jesus too was said to be the closest soul to the father. It bears repeating, as above, so below. Mercury seems to be the stepping stone towards unification with God. Mercury is being associated with roosters who crows at dawn, symbolically links him to the rising sun at dawn. So we see a solar connection here. Now it seems to me that the God Most High is in fact not Yahweh, but due to the nature of creation of the Bible, I do believe that Yahweh's name is also used for referring to what would be a God above him. For instance, when Metatron is called the Lesser Yahweh, I have in the past correlated Yahweh with Enlil, who I link to Jupiter in the heavenly abode. There seems to be a constant struggle of supremacy between Saturn and Jupiter, which the Godhead itself let play out, it seems. It seems to me that the name of the true father has been lost to us. I like the using of the name Atum when referring to the father, but at this point, I guess you can probably use any name that suits you. El Elyon, which means God Most High, is one interesting proposal, but that is a story for a different video. My father who has given to them is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand, and I and the father are one. John 10.29 Statements like this will show you why Jesus has been confused with his father, the son. In essence, they both represent the same thing. As mentioned, I have made the case of that Mercury does in fact correspond with Jesus, the living God. If this is the first time you're hearing this, then I would recommend you go watch my two previous videos I've made on the subject. Links in the description. According to the New Testament, in the last few moments of his life, Jesus cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
In the Gospel of Mark, these are Jesus' final words. But one ancient copy of Mark, the Codex Bobiensis, has a different take entirely. In the oldest surviving Latin Gospel, Jesus seems to call out for the sun god Helios instead. To paraphrase Jesus here, again Jesus spoke to him, saying, I am the light of the world, I and the Father are one. Now let us return to the Son being the Father. In ancient Egyptian mythology, we find the figure of Ra, who was of course a sun god. In some variations of ancient Egyptian tales, he was said to be the father of Toth, which is of course just a different name for Mercury. Jesus was said to be the word made flesh, the Logos, and Toth of course was said to be the voice of Ra. Toth, sheep sample, was located in the city of Hermopolis. Now here we see the connection of Toth and Hermes being almost interchangeable characters in their different mythos. The Temple of Toth was mostly destroyed before the beginning of the Christian era. Its very large throne was still standing in 1862, but was demolished and used as a fill for the foundation of a sugar factory by the mid 19th century. Just a little something that makes you hate the path or modern world and society has taken. In Egyptian mythology, we find a conflict between the god of Horus with his rival Set, in which Set tears out and destroys one of Horus's eyes, and the eye was subsequently healed by Toth. His role as a healer, of course, also mirrored Jesus' life and works. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. John 6.35 Toth is often seen depicted holding an ant, the Egyptian symbol for life. Toth played many vital and prominent roles in Egyptian mythology, such as manifesting the universe, and being one of the two deities. The other being Ma, the other being Maat, who stood on either side of Ra's solar body. Here we see the Trinity: Ra, the Father; Toth, the Son; and Maat, the Holy Spirit. It would then make sense if the Father is androgynous, the Son is male, of course, and the Holy Spirit, being female, completes the Trinity. The father could possibly also be male, representing the positive generation force, but that is neither here nor there, and I will leave it up to you to decide on gender, since deciding gender seems to be all the craze nowadays. Since the deciding on gender seems to be all the craze nowadays. Now this has been a short but very cryptic video. I think we uncovered a lot in this one. Thanks for watching. I implore you to check out my Patreon to support my work. For those of you that have decided to support me, I appreciate it a lot. I feel like an internet beggar doing clown tricks for your entertainment in the hope that you donate. Trust me, if I was in this for the money, I would have chosen a different area of study. Anyway, rant over. I will see you in the next one, mortals.